Hi, this is Jeff Cobra, and we're glad that you could join us uh, with what is actually two trips to the Magic Kingdom to cover all of the crazy things that are happening in advance of the 50th anniversary. We are on the water here. You may want to see this on J. Jeff Cobra video. We passed by the uh, Staten Island ferry boats where they're actually changing the docks and everything to allow for second tier boarding at the same time the bottom floor is boarding. And we're passing by the train station uh, out in the water and it just looks beautiful. On the monorail we get the same amazing look and feeling as we come by the train station which has completely been uh, well the entire remodeling of it has been completed and it looks perfect just needs a train in front of it that would be really good we're stepping off the monorail and we see that there are already banners for Walt Disney World's 50th magical celebration and they are in the front of the park and as we step through the entry of the park, we get an even closer view of that train station along with the beautiful floral Mickey. You know, if you actually look closer at the Magic Kingdom sign on the train, you'll notice it says established in 1971. Used to have the actual uh, population or number of people who had attended the park. That's no longer there, no longer can be found. Over here on the side, we see cast members all dressed up for the Boo Bash. Uh, Mickey's Boo Bash at uh, Magic Kingdom and they're all getting into places and as we head into Town Square it uh, we we see that uh, there is a trolley along with uh, Piglet and Pooh Bear and Rabbit and Eeyore and they're all heading down uh, into Main Street. All of Main Street has been decorated for uh, this Halloween time of year, it is that time. But we still get a few character cavalcades as we see on this one coming down the street with the Mickey Mouse. It's not the parades, but I'm still glad there's something there. Moving forward, we see Cinderella Castle, and there's been a special 50th anniversary medallion that has been placed over the entrance arch in a doorway into the castle. Uh, it's just looking beautiful. We have a close-up shot of that as well that you could see. And it's just interesting to study the castle uh, at different times of the day during uh, as different light pours into uh, the... Uh, the castle itself and and how the light reflects on uh, the colors that are being used for this castle by the way we'll end with a little snippet from happily ever after it's interesting that even though that show is going away very shortly they actually incorporated the 50th medallion into the animation of the castle so that it is part of it you know there's a lot of squish and squash stretch kind of thing going on with uh, and different colors and, and different uh, shapes going on in the castle during the fireworks. I was very impressed that they did this. Another view again from the uh, bridge taking us from Liberty Square up into Fantasyland and uh, and that's a good time to kind of step into Fantasyland where by Sir Mickey's you'll see a former uh, area that was dedicated to um, uh, sorcerers interactive program is no longer there. I don't know if you've ever seen this little photo area that's inside Sir Mickey's. That's uh, a little surprising too. A little sign here saying, hi ho, hi ho, it's off to work we go. Thanks for your patience as we spruce things up. This is in front of Be Our Guest. You'll see some scaffolding on the castle as well as on a portion of the mountain. It's the portion of the mountain that's really uh, involving uh, the waterfalls. To, um, off to the side of the restaurant entrance. And uh, not far beyond, the little shop that was in that little town, that little village of Bells, is back open now. It had opened up a couple of times during earlier in the pandemic, but not much. Prince Eric's Market is open for business and, uh, and uh, very much uh, selling turkey legs and pretzels and, uh, and uh, drinks. And next door you see that actually the cartography uh, stand 
uh, is also um, selling DVC. So their DVC people have returned. Now we are over here at Storybook Circus, where we're seeing that all of these tents are going through a big paint job. And in fact, they've replaced all of the signage for the different circus acts of Storybook Circus. So it's just part of the entire sprucing up that the entire magic, there is a corner that hasn't been touched up at the Magic Kingdom in time for the 50th anniversary. They have really invested a lot considering how crazy things are. Now over here we see Tron and they have put a mesh netting over what has uh, been kind of the lighting panels, the, the exterior covering that uh, covers the outside portion of the coaster. There's also a side building being created, which I think will be used largely for gift shop purposes and maybe queuing. It's a two-story area, so I would say that maybe both uh, levels are going to be used to, um, to handle different situations. They also do a lot of lockers with Tron. Over here we have Chester Cat Cafe, all opened up. The Your favorite little uh, cattails are available. And here is a uh, cast member <laughs> drawing Mickey Mouse with uh, use of a little bit of water. Very cool. Returning to the main courtyard of Fantasyland, we are in front of Princess Fairy Tale Hall. And man, the uh, work they've done on the gold uh, filigree that is in the signage in front of this is just sparkling. It's beautiful, as is the carousel and so many other things in Fantasyland. We head over to It's a Small World, where they have taken the um, entrance area where you queue and board the attraction, disembark from the attraction, and they have painted much of it, not all of it, but almost all of it, with uh, a different pastels of uh, blue and pink and purple and green. And uh, it, I don't know that I'd want to see it there forever in this uh, shade, but again, with the 50th anniversary, it's just an example. All the little sprucing. Now, what has to happen after the 50th anniversary opens is they need to keep this area clean because oftentimes there's a lot of dust that settles on all of that glitter and all of um, those walls. And, and, and so it takes a lot of cleaning to keep this area uh, looking really pristine but notwithstanding it's a very nice little touch uh, to to the uh, to the queue and entryway of it's a small world and um, so on that note we move from it's a small world and we head on over to Liberty Square where guess what we finally have the opening of the Columbia Harbor House, which has been closed since the reopening of the park. Uh, was used as a queue for Peter Pan. Now I'm gonna, this is an interesting place. I have a real love, hate love relationship with this restaurant. And as I keep trying to study it in my mind, what is it that I really like? The food's okay. I mean, there's some dishes I kind of like. Um, and, you know, I ordered the lobster roll and the hush puppies, and it was good. Maybe not the healthiest thing, but it was enjoyable. Uh, the kitchen looked, the, the behind the counter looked pristine. In fact, it actually looked like the tile may have been replaced on the backsplash. I, I have to go compare that. Um, but when you think about what it is, the one thing the fans say that they love most about the Columbia Harbor House, what they say is they love going upstairs and going to that section that overlooks Liberty Square and Fantasyland on both sides. They love the respite of that. They love getting away to that little corner of it. So here I am finally visiting the Columbia Harbor House and guess what? Yeah, they, they've closed the second half of the, the upstairs of the restaurant. They could have closed half of the downstairs and half of the upstairs. And, not taking up more space. It was six o'clock in the evening. I think that was a miss. I don't think they realize what is really special. At the same time, I, so many parts of the Harbor House, it looks like 1970s Maine, when it should be looking like colonial Maine. There's too much of it that is a decoupage, a signage, and macrame, which were crafts 
that were such a part of the 1970s. And I just, I ha again, it's part of my love-hate affair with, with Columbia Harbor House. I prefer it over just about any other counter service restaurant in the Magic Kingdom, but still, I just wish there was, uh, it needs an update to look timeless, not old looking, dated looking. It needs to look timeless to the ninth to the 1770s. Anyway, we head out of Liberty Square and we take on the infamous Haunted Mansion. And that's interesting because again, it's about 6.30 in the evening and uh, it says there's a 30 minute, 35 minute, 30 minute standby line. It's walk on. And this is an evening, this is what makes this so even interesting. This is an evening where there's a boo bash. In fact, they've set out uh, the, a little a bench in the yard, the front yard, for um, ghosts to kind of uh, take a stroll in the park, so to speak, or you know, s sit in the, on the bench and, and uh, interact with the guests, which is a very cool little piece of entertainment. I love that, but... Um, but I find this very interesting. In fact, actually, on both days that I attended, most of the attractions were very uh, low weights. The exception being Jungle Cruise. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But, uh, but the rest of the attractions, uh, very, very little weight, if any. You see, we're going through the cemetery portion, and uh, it's just all walk through in this area. The other thing that's very cool as we go into the Hunt Mansion, is that, uh, well, for the first time in forever, as we enter into the mansion, we are going to actually have the chance to experience it as the attraction is laid out. Now, before, uh, what was happening is you were just stepping through the stretch, one of the stretch rooms. This time, however, you are going, to, you're in, from, at this point now, they're allowing you to experience the attraction. You go in the first lobby with the changing portrait of uh, the old man, and then you go into the stretch room. And uh, well, you know what? I think this is a good time for me to start stop talking and for you to just enjoy this little portion of the Haunted Mansion because it's such a great little scene as uh, as we experience this chamber. Here where you see paintings of some of our guests as they appeared in their corruptible mortal state. <laughs> Kindly step all the way in please and make room for everyone. There's no turning back now. Kindly drag your bodies away from the walls and into the dead center of the room. Your cadaverous pallor betrays an aura of foreboding, almost as though you sense a disquieting metamorphosis. Is this haunted room actually stretching, or is it your imagination? Mm -hmm. And consider this dismaying observation. This chamber has no windows and no doors. <laughs> which offers you this chilling challenge to find a way out <laughs> of course there's always my way frighten you prematurely. <laughs> the real chills come later. Now, as they say, look alive and we'll continue our tour. And let's all stay together. That invitation to let's all stay together, please, probably still not a really good good statement to make as we are still trying to stay a little socially distanced but if you can see uh, through the darkness of this video um, that we have here you can see that we're still all kind of connected a little a little too 
too connected, um, socially distanced here. So, but always remember, as you are going through the park, you can always just stop and distance yourself four, six feet or whatever from the party in front of you. You may not be able to control the ones in back of you, but you can at least control the ones in front. Moving into Liberty Square after the Haunted Mansion, you'll see at that, uh, at the Liberty Tree Tavern, seating is available. And in fact, there's even signage saying, hey, check in, um, see this. And, uh, and so it is out there for guests to enjoy. I'm also a little surprised that there is tape marked along the pathway here when really all they're doing are the character cavalcades, which are so temporary. Over here in Frontierland, we see the shooting gallery. Looks like they're uh, doing a little bit of refurb on it, maybe getting ready to reopen it in the next few days to come. We can all hope uh, that that is, it's one of the rema few remaining attractions that have not reopened. We're heading down Frontierland and Heading by Country Bear Jamboree, earlier I saw uh, some of the bears uh, waving to the guests and saying hello from the uh, balcony of the Country Bear Jamboree. Over at Splash Mountain, you see some scaffolding that has been set up against the mill. Is this the beginning of the reconstruction of the mountain to be transformed into uh, the Princess and the Frog attraction? Well. No, this is a part of the preparations for the 50th anniversary and they're just doing some rehab. In fact, usually that rehab is done in January or February. I think with all the other little rehabs they've been doing in the park and wanting, hopefully, hoping for stronger attendance later on, they are, um, they are just doing some slight maintenance to it. If you've been hearing some of the things on the Disney Parks blog, they've been, uh, they hosted a little group talking about uh, upcoming changes to the attraction. I can tell you from what I got out of that conversation, it is my belief that this attraction will not be changed out until after Christmas of 22. I think they're, they have that much work ahead of themselves to really um, prepping and getting this ready. So it's gonna go, in my view, the better part of that 18 month uh, celebration for the 50th anniversary. It'll probably go in Jan down January 23. Um, so you've still got time to enjoy Splash Mountain. We're over here in Adventureland, coming by Aloha Isle, but coming by the Enchanted Tiki Room and what's really kind of interesting up ahead is that they have been putting down, they have been painting the, uh, the uh, walkways or the, the pavement. They often use a sort of slurry to paint this and uh, some walkways are green, some are kind of red. This is a green slurry they put down. The color is not very good, not very impressive. And it's only a section. It looks like that was kind of a test. And I don't know what's coming out of the test. The totems are spewing plenty of mist and spray. And uh, they're up and running. And we see, of course, the fly magic flying carpets nearby. We turn past with Family Treehouse and head toward the docks of the Jungle Cruise. Now, just recently, in fact, the previous uh, podcast, I did a pretty extended review of all the changes which have been added to the Jungle Cruise. You can see the signage is empty here in this image for the Fast Pass, which is going to be renamed to um, Lightning Lane. And, uh, and you see the monitors, which probably will be used for for selling the Genie Plus um, editions for guests who don't have mobile devices. Uh, there's some wonderful changes that have gone on in the queue, and uh, we highlight those in our podcast and show them here on the video. Um, some of those changes uh, involve uh, changes to the office, which has included a bunch of props from the Jungle Cruise uh, film. You see Frank's cap, you see a conquistador helmet. You also see these very strange caged 
Um, uh, man-eating plants or something. I don't know what they eat, but at any rate, uh, definitely check out that podcast for the Jungle Cruise. We've returned at twilight to Fantasyland. Peter Pan's flight, the signage has been added onto it. We're heading toward the carousel, and I gotta tell you, it's just, it's just it's beautiful. Again, I would love to see them redo all of the pavement throughout the parks, but but right now, all of the buildings and the look and feel of the park is just impressive right now. It really, everything looks really good. A few pieces like the castle that be our guests have to be tidied up and so forth, but by and large, looks really nice. So we've roped off the inner courtyard for the upcoming um, a happily ever after show and that includes uh, Mickey's filler magic over there which was roped up we've only got a another uh, few weeks and we'll have the new Coco segment added to Mickey's filler magic take a look at that carousel just beautiful all of the lights on it all of the color the horses look beautiful everything just looks very lovely and again we head by uh, Princess Fairy Tale Hall again and see it again with the gold filigree at night it just again looks really stunning walking a little further over we are heading over to um the mad tea party it too has had some touch-ups done to it and uh and it's looking very nice especially in the evening hours uh, they had a special light show that would, went on with the Mickey Not So Scary Halloween Party. It'd be nice to have that added to this. Uh, I don't think it's even playing during the, the Boo Bash. And then we're heading into Tomorrowland. And I have to say, of all the times of the day to be in Tomorrowland, our Tomorrowland at Magic Kingdom probably looks better than any other Tomorrowland in any other Magic Kingdom style park. Just love it. You've got the people moving. You get a little crowd uh, gathered, but not, not, a, not a long crowd gathered at the people mover. Um, and it's running. That's good. We've passed by Buzz Lightyear's. Uh, haven't been on that attraction recently. Well, though there were some um, updates done to it not too long ago. I think they did some over the uh, closing before they've reopened the park. Very sad when you go by stitches. No sign of stitch, no reference to even a stitch character meet and greet. And it you know, kind of looks dark on that, that corner. Some of the lighting is not working in that corner. That's disappointing. There's a missed opportunity. Those theaters have the potential of doing some fun things in them. It's sad that it's not in there. I'd be happy to have Alien and Camera come back for that purpose. What has come back is Monsters Incorporated Laugh Floor. And the doors are wide open and uh, guests are being welcomed into that attraction. I never thought that was a good attraction for a Tomorrowland theme, but I do think that the comedians and the performers for Monster Laugh Floor are superb. And sometimes I am just rolling in the aisle because of the humor. And now we're back on Main Street as guests are getting ready for the fireworks. The lights are on down the street and uh, people are anticipating the uh, upcoming show. Uh, we are going to go over to the Main Street Cinema. The, the new confectionery has not opened. I understand the marble floors look amazing. Um, and I heard from one of the cast members who thought that probably by the end of this month, this month being August, that we would see that store open. I'm sure it will be open before the 50th anniversary. We step into the cinema and there's still some treats to gather there. And um, I guess they're checking that out. Um, and now we're back on Main Street and we're just waiting for Happily Ever After to begin. And it is a beautiful evening. The castle looks amazing. Main Street looks amazing. Uh, and we're excited. We, by the way, just thank you for joining this podcast and being part of it. Make sure if you haven't checked out the video, you check it out because it's got all the visuals of what we've talked about. And and, and then again, if you're seeing this on J. Jeff Cobra, our YouTube channel, make sure you come over to our podcast and check out the other podcasts that we have. Um, 
that are not related to any of the videos here on J. Jeff Cobra. So make sure you subscribe to Disney at Play.com, Disney at Work.com, and to our YouTube channel, J. Jeff Cobra. Um, all of that is designed to help you enjoy your experience as we enjoy all things Disney together. Again, thanks for being a part. And in the words of Sinbad's storybook, Voyage, always follow the compass of your heart. We hope you have a really great day. We'll see you real soon. And we're going to end this podcast and video with the last closing moments of Happily Ever After as guests await the flight of Tinkerbell. So here we go. <laughs>